CERN Abbey in Dorset is a historic house with monastic roots dating back 1,000 years. For the past 50 years, it's been the home of the Fulford Dobson family. During my visit, I'll hear about the rich history and some royal visitors. The Prince of Wales, who's now the king, who then... Well, yes, we, that was very funny, yes, the seeing Prince the village Wales activity. Came. We had him here. Plus, I'll join Barbara in her studio. Now yeah. tell me just a little bit about this painting here. It's... Oh, I that, oh, walked yes, that. in and I loved it. Oh. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey. But it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge. And every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors and stately homes as much as I do, please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. Welcome back everybody to the drawing room here at Mapperton. And this time I travel and visit the wonderful CERN Abbey. It's the most beautiful historic house. It's nestled in the enchanting village of CERN Abbas and CERN Abbas is here in Dorset. For the past 50 years or so, it's been the family home of Michael and Barbara Fulford Dobson. And Michael served in the Royal Navy for, can you believe this? 36 years and Barbara is just a brilliant artist. The CERN Abbey is where they raise their three children and really where they have lovingly and respectfully cared for a piece of England's architectural heritage with, might I add, monastic roots dating back to 987. The bonus here though is the family are friends of ours so I was really really excited to see them again. Treat yourself to the best gift in history this holiday season. Enjoy unlimited access to award-winning podcasts and thousands of hours of original history documentaries released weekly exclusively on History Hit. There are topics for all history lovers, from Pompeii to D-Day. Sign up via the link in the description for an exclusive discount. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to explore the past like never before with History Hit. Heading to see Jessica and her wonderful parents. Quite a knocker. <laughs> Hope you heard that. I think I did. <laughs> so I get a bit stuck. Hello. Hello, Jean. hello, hello, hello. Mm. Mm, well, wonderful. Finally, you're here. Yeah, I'm finally here, and what, that's impressive. Yeah, no, it, well, you, yeah, like yeah. these things, they echo around a bit, but they, it's the handle you've you got to be a little careful with. <laughs> Can get a bit dicky. Like everything, yeah, everything in these historic houses. Once inside, I headed into the warmth of the kitchen where Michael and Barbara had a wonderful coffee waiting for me. So, come on through. Okay. We'll get Brilliant. Eventually mid-flow with the frothing of the milk. Now what we got, oh, here we go. <gasps> the Capitano <laughs> and his Mrs. Julie. Remember <laughs> Julie? Hello. My favorite couple. <laughs> you are my favorite couple. You know that. Hello. 
It's mm. lovely to see you. It's Thank nice you for coming. Michael. Hello, I'm Barbara. You, you're my favorite <laughs> woman ever, <laughs> ever, ever. How Look, brilliant. Look, coffee. I'm doing some cappuccino. Would you like that? Yeah, I would love that. That is brilliant. So I've, I, you know, I've just arrived, and do you know I can't believe that I've never been here. I've seen you so many times at really? Mapperton, yeah. drinks party, all of that, but I've never been here. So this is God. a real treat. Well, I'm so Ooh. pleased. And beautiful to drive through the village. Thank you very, yeah. very well, much. I, I've read um, poor. Really, but boring. Might I add that you're also the best dressed couple. I'll, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you are. So if you haven't seen the rest yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With our cappuccinos in hand, we then settled by the fire in the hall. But let's be honest here, everybody knows I have an obsession with all things royal. So I couldn't help but ask about the royal visits to Cern Abbey over the years. When I walked up the path there, I saw several royal visits, including a prime minister. So Winston Churchill yes. has been here. The Queen Mother has been here. The Prince of Wales, who's now the King, who then... Well, yes, we, that was very uh, funny, yes, seeing the, Prince the village of Wales activity. Came. We had him here. Uh, in fact, there's a picture of him over there. Right. Take, taken here, which was uh, lovely. And we've also had the Wessexes. You have the Wessexes. Uh, and they came for lunch one day. Why did, well, now King Charles III come here? Um, what? Because I was Lord Lieutenant at the time. Right. And... Uh, he came to Sir Nabus to do something in one of the uh, houses here and um, he needed to be entertained in between uh, venues. Right. And so he came to us, sat in the drawing room and... Powdered his nose when he wanted to. Had his cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do make a very good yeah. cappuccino, so I'm sure he thoroughly enjoyed that. Yes. But also, Dad, um, we, we are trying to get him to write his memoirs, which he gets a bit shy about, but you were f from I'm flag lieutenant to lord lieutenant. <laughs> so he gets a bit shy thinking, oh, I can't mm. write. Mm. But I think, um, yeah, I always find it very interesting. And recently they went, uh, they were, I don't know how one puts it when you're invited to someone's funeral, but the Queen's um, oh, well, we went committal to, We service. were invited to the interment service in Windsor. Right. Uh, Which is obviously quite a unique yeah. um, thing to be. But that arose because um, I'm what's called a gentleman usher. And the Queen has got, uh, or the King now, um, ten people who are four from the Army, three from the Navy, three from the Royal Air Force. And uh, they are the catalyst that acts between the royals and the public. Right. So, for example, at a royal garden party, every member of the royal family has one of us with them oh my to goodness. look after them and produ produce people to be introduced and that sort of thing. Um, in the Queen's Lane, there are four of us, right. uh, and the others have, have just one. Right. Um, and uh, we do all sorts of other things. For example, I was in charge of all the bridesmaids and the pages at the York wedding. <laughs> of, all, of all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Which was quite... Uh, right. And, and then, then, I suppose, and f going but, from one extreme to the other, Princess Diana's funeral as well. You yes, attended that. Yes. Didn't you? Did you? All that, yes. I mean, because that mm. must have been extraordinary. Because uh, we were all down in the country when that happened. But it's, Right. Yes, my job then was to load the royal family at Buckingham Palace and send them off to Westminster. For the funeral of Princess for the, Diana. For the funeral, right. yes. Right. Uh, no, they, they, they were extraordinary occasions to be um, involved in, as you can imagine. Uh, of course. But I, I find, uh, looking back on it, 
I've served the Queen three times. First for 36 years in the Navy. Mm. Um, I was th the day I retired from the Navy, I got home here and there was a rather interesting letter in a rather good quality envelope awaiting me. And it was from Lord Airlie, who was the Lord Chamberlain at the time. And in it he said, if you feel you'd like to do some duties in the royal household, will you come and see me? Well, I was on the next train up to London <laughs> and I went and saw him and he said, you know, the idea is that you'll become one of the gentleman ushers. So anyway, that was, that was my second time of serving her. Um, and then, of course, I served her as Lord Lieutenant here in Dorset. Yes. Uh, so uh, I've, I've had a good innings one way or another. You certainly have. It was absolutely fascinating to hear from Michael about his lifetime of service to Her Majesty the Queen. And I felt really privileged and honored when he offered to show me some of the medals that he had been awarded. Now this is my, I'm a Knight of the Order of St. John. Fantastic. And that is the, <gasps> the star that goes here and that's the bit that goes around the neck. Right, and why were you presented with this given this? Well, I don't quite, I think it was not long after I became Lord Lieutenant. Mm. Um, I was invited to become a Knight of the Order. My CVO, which is, this is the one that was given to me personally by the Queen. By the Queen. And yeah. this is the commander of, of, the, Vic of the Royal Victorian Order. Order. Right. Yes. And to receive that from the Queen, I mean, that is yes. quite extraordinary, isn't yes. it? <gasps> it's yes. It's so beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And then over here, of course, now I that's see the, that's the Royal the, Coat that's, of Arms. That's the, the Lord Lieutenant stuff. Uh, right, should uh, I just have yeah, a little, uh, yeah. yeah. That's a seal and a half, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. Uh, and the ER right there. Yeah. And Queen, wow, that's extraordinary. Look at there, that yeah. is Queen Elizabeth, is that? Yeah, it yes, is. it is. Yeah. yeah. And on the other yeah. side. Yeah. Yes. And then if we take this off. And, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this is Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So this was um, the fourth day of August in the 48th year of the Queen's reign. Is that right? That's right, yes. And by worn under the Queen's sign manual. Beautiful. As with so many of the historic homes that I visit around the UK, each owner really does make their mark. And there's one room at Cern Abbey which really does speak of Barbara and Michael's life together. Wow. <gasps> oh, it's so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness, how lovely. Now, now these are all Barbara's pictures, <gasps> including the self-portrait. The self-portrait <laughs> is, I mean, it is beautiful. These yeah. are, and... That's her mother. That's her mother. And just, and the, the landscape, these are fantastic. Yes. And then, oop, I've just spotted the queen there. Yes. Yes. Now. Where is this? I'm not sure where it was taken. It was on a visit somewhere. Oh, it's so nice to come into a home like, you know, yes. Surin Abbey. And it's, yes, it's got its, you know, roots back to 987. Yeah. And, but yet it's this lived in family home with- Absolutely. With, um, you know, paintings and- And all the muddle that goes with it. Exactly. Thank you, Michael. This mm. is just tremendous to see this and beautiful. Yeah. 
it's it's really you and Barbara in this room together. Yes, it this, is a bit. Yeah, it yes, is. Yes. And that's what's so wonderful. All around the house, Barbara's artistic vision is plain to see. It's everywhere. And her work is stunning. But as many artists, Barbara is rather self-effacing and a little reticent to speak about her work. But she did invite me into her most sacred space, her studio. And there she told me about her childhood during the Second World War and how she really transformed the studio into her haven. So Barbara, yes. I've just walked into your studio, oh, yeah. having just left beautiful you know, Cern Abbey, Abbey and uh, w it, with all of its historic, of course, historic elements, but then I come in here and I feel that this is your space. Yes. You've created this space. Mm -hmm. Tell me just a little bit about what happened when you saw this space? What was it like before you converted it? And what was your vision in creating <laughs> what it is today? How many dollars have you got? <laughs> a lot. No, all I remember is that when we came, this was completely robbed right across the well, cards, and then the rest was all, you know, concrete. Concrete. Right. Because basically the top part wasn't there. Right. Th yes, th I mean, the it was, was all on the ground, really. Right. A she, shell. A right. shell. Yes. And so anyway, we sorted it out. And you that sorted was it. But yes. was this a dream for you? Because a little bit of your background, you're an artist, and I've walked in here, and I see, I've seen a lot of your pictures are Italy, and I have a love of Italy myself, mm. and it, it, clearly you do as well. But you are Italian. Yes. I would, if I could take this to Italy, it yes. would be perfect. Right. <laughs> Being a mother of yes. three young girls yes. here, yes. was this your way to escape? Did you feel that you came here and you were able to create an escape? Because I know I'm a mother of four, yes. and it's hard. And yes. did you feel that this studio... Well, no, it helped me to go to something different, you yes. see, and yes. to forget about them. Yes. Not that I didn't want to be a good mother, no, but no, you no, know. No, of course not. But, um, to, but to have space for you. Mm. And to, did you feel also that this gave you the opportunity to create that space of Italy I, with your parents? Yes, I, yes. So, Barbara, now yes. tell me just a little bit about this painting here. It's, oh, I that. Oh, walked yes, that. in and I loved it. <laughs> because, do you know what, it reminded me. Because you'd never had a thing like it. Because it reminded me of me. A mother of four really? with children. So tell me about this. It's it's a work of art. Well, <laughs> I was not feeling in a very good form. I can tell you that much. And the children, you know, she was whining for food, and um, here was all the things that I hadn't made money for. You yep, know, and bills, I owed I it. Bills, I owed yep. it. I owed it all that. She hadn't eaten for some time. <laughs> right. I'd got my thing there. And all he could do was say, just leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. It's the child going, oh, mommy, I haven't had anything to eat. And look, it's only nine o'clock. Oh, will you just have to wait? You see? Yes. That's yep. it. Your art is magnificent. Oh my goodness, I mean, it's a pity you didn't tell 10 years ago or something. <laughs> but it is. And would you say that this, it, out of all of your pieces, mm. what is, for you, what is your most special? Oh, I for don't, you? I think almost that, really, because it, was, it, it, it meant so many children or men or women would be, have had that feeling. But I have to tell you, nobody could have done anything like I could when I started that. Nothing, because I remember my mother saying, well, just get a piece of paper and do it. And I go, oh, here's a paper and things. And it was quite extraordinary. She said, I'm not going to help you. She said, but I'm going to say things that you should try and do. She said, and then I might sort of think. And 
if she hadn't done that, I would never have touched it. Never. No. Because I never thought that I could. Nobody had ever said So your anything. mother encouraged you oh, yes. to become the artist that you are today. Well, you yeah. well yes. yes. Well, yes. Well, or I got sort of at that. Yeah. Yes. She was having bombs dropping off her over and saying we were, we, right. we were in the middle of it. Yes, at incredible. The same time. But yet you know. she's encouraging her daughter, you, yes, yes. to become... Well, she said, if you get something like that, it'll be something that you can have for your life <gasps> and you'll never regret it. Oh. That's Which what I suppose mother, is true yeah. because that brings tears to my eyes. But, but because <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh. and she was a lovely mother, yeah. wasn't oh. she? Oh, we lucky with our lovely she's mommy. So yes, that's yes, such, she but was. she's brought, that is lovely. <laughs> yeah, but she's dead, oh. unfortunately. I know, I know. She's probably in a better place. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> It was so special to spend time with Barbara in her studio. Family really is at the center of Cern Abbey. And during the past 50 years, the Fulford Dobson family have taken on the preservation of this 1,000 year old historic house and have made it into the most welcoming and wonderful family home. Sitting by the fire, I was keen to find out from Michael and Barbara what it's been like living alongside this 1,000 year history. I just would like to know a little bit more of the history. Of course, foundations, 987. There was probably something here before that, but the foundation of the Benedictine Abbey was in 987. Right. And then it uh, went on until the dissolution in 1539. So the dissolution happened, but the guest house is what has remained, is that correct? The guest house and the abbot's porch. And the abbot's porch, that's and right. this building that we're in. Yes, explain to me this building that yes. I'm in right now, beautiful. Yes, yes. Well, it was, the, it was the south gate house. Right. It was the main entrance in, into the abbey. This fireplace was put here by one of the abbots who was abbot in about 1509. Absolutely beautiful. Well, there, there, there is a thought that in the early part of the life of the abbey that this might have been the abbot's quarters. <coughs> okay. Before it expanded. Right. And the, the extraordinary thing about the abbey here is that the abbey building has vanished. Right. Most places where there were abbeys, they're the remains of an abbey. Uh, and there are great works going on at the moment, people doing digs and one thing or another, to try and find out where the foundations were for the original abbey building. We think it was out in Beaver Field out here. Okay. But we don't know. Are archaeological digs happening now, or is that it, the it, hope? Or? It's, a, it's about to happen. Uh, there's a system where they can put soundings into the ground and yes. see where walls were and that sort of thing. Um, and they've done quite a lot of that around the abbot's port. That so, is yeah. absolutely brilliant. The two of you, so you've stumbled upon Cern Abbey and I would just like to hear the story now that we, we understand obviously the, the roots of it, the dissolution, what is left standing, but how did the two of you come arrive, he here. arrive here? Well, I can, <laughs> I can, tell, you, <laughs> I can tell you that we, we lived five miles away, and um, I heard that Lord Digby, who was the owner of this at that yeah. stage, uh, was selling. I had a conversation with him about the, the abbey. And anyway, he's, he agreed that he would sell it to us. So uh, we bought it, uh, and that was in 1957. No, oh, oh, the conversation though, you bought in 1978, 79. 79, well, you're quite right, yeah. yes, 79. But, I, but the conversation uh, yes, around. Yes, that's what happened You're earlier. quite right, yes, yeah. it was. We actually bought a house without a roof. <laughs> And just before we signed the contract to buy it, the north roof fell off. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. And Eddie Digby rang me up and said, what builders are you going to use? And I said, well, do I need any builders? He said, well, the roof has just fallen <laughs> off. <laughs> what was it about Cern Abbey that, you, that drew you to not just this beautiful home, but knowing that there would be a lot of work that yeah. would be involved in it. Yes, I think it's because I like the house in particular. Um, we quite like living in a biggish house rather than a small one. And uh, I think that when it came on the market, it seemed too good an opportunity to miss. Yes. And so we went for it, um, accepting that, of course, there would be a lot of work involved. You know, a house of this age, uh, you yes. expect problems, as I'm sure you get at Murphyson. But we quite like doing <coughs> it. But you took on this project, the two of you together. Oh, that... we've always loved things like that. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, oh, yes. yes. I think we enjoyed doing it. You can't just do something that everybody mm. else does. You've got to get out and, you know, make a thing. No, so yeah. She loves a challenge. And yes. loves a challenge. And do you feel, you know, I think for me, obviously coming from Mapperton, where it is a constant project, I think projects are, in one aspect, very, very healthy mm. because they keep the mind going, Absolutely. they keep you busy. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, and did, yeah. you, did you feel that, but was there ever a time in, the, you know, these sort of uh, 50 years that you've been here that you felt, oh gosh, what have I done? Why did I take on such a labor of love? Or has, the, no. the short answer to that is not at all at yes. any stage. And I would say never. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's incredible. No, we love the house. That was the thing that we really were together, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Barbara, I would love to just hear from you, you know, coming in here as a young mother, but also an artist. I look around all of these walls here, and I know many of this, and I know throughout dotted around the house, this is, you know, these are your pictures. This is your art. I'm going to speak for my mother because I know she gets quite shy. Yeah. So, Mum, do you want me to, to tell a little bit? Because I know yes. you'll be like, because she's so self-effacing. Yes. A, a lot of her interiors, I suddenly realise, as you've just said, the rooms you're sitting in here, because she didn't arrive and had a whole collection that you can't move, like a museum, she arrived with walls that were empty. Right. And, it's fascinating. You know, your 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 mother's uh, family house was had a direct hit in, during the war, so a lot of their possessions were either blown up or you're just going down a different line. So mum was a big collector, the two of them together, and so these rooms are a bit like her paintings. And I've never fully appreciated that when I go and I think that the atmosphere when you open the curtains, every detail you're looking at is being put in by my mother. Right. And so they loved it together, but their combination. Dad's loved all the restoration, but Mum loves all her team that come and work here. And you're, well, some of your happiest days are out with Terry, all the different people who are helping, realising your vision. Because this has been lots of visions that she's... You know, with turned. two people, you don't want everybody to be doing the same thing, so it's much better for Mum to be there. Yes, that's exactly yes. right. I, 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 I absolutely understand that. Well, here we are, 56 years of marriage that you're witnessing here. Incredible. And Touchwood's still going Almost strong. Too. Still going strong. Still sure. going strong. And what a beautiful home that you've created and mm. raised your family in, and, um, but continue to do the work. I mean, what's extraordinary is arriving here and seeing Jessica, and you know, you say, well, so we've got works going on here. I mean, it reminds me of Mapperton. <laughs> You're never alone. It's never very quiet. <laughs> yeah. And these are craftsmen. You know, you know this is it, it, painstakingly time-consuming to make sure that you are preserving this part of England's heritage and doing it the right way mm. and, and to make sure that generations yes, can then yeah. enjoy it yeah. um, further on. Yeah, so, yeah. No, it, it's quite something seeing it. As you say, people go, oh, just slam a little window in there. But it's like, no, how it's all done with grade one listed is everything has to be as it was, which again does keep the craft alive, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. It keeps the craft alive. But I'm conscious of the fact that we're really just custodians Absolutely, we are. That, that's yeah. our, our role. Yes. Over the past few years, Jessica has been spending more time at Cern Abbey. Walking in the garden, she talked to me about the huge responsibility she feels for the future. 
fascinating, of course, seeing your parents. As I always oh, say, they yeah. are my favorite couple, um, apart from my in-laws. Okay. Think, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> but, you know, I'm being right here back. now and seeing all the work that's gone into preserving, you know, this beautiful historic house, do you feel that you also have this responsibility of taking on the reins, of course, you know, if and when that happens, and how does that feel? Because I know going into Mapperton, it's been quite daunting for me. Right, Because yes. it's, it's a lovely home, but it's also, it's a big project. Yeah. Constantly. Yes. Yes, it is. I, I found that um, COVID for me was, was the time that, you know, I was, I was away doing my own thing. And again, the difference as a modern woman now, when we have other things that we're doing, there's that element of suddenly at a time in life which COVID brought of, oh, there's a responsibility here that I could either welcome or just say after this, we'll let it go. Right. And I've got two sisters. I'm the middle one, bit of the loose cannon, I call myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm middle too. Uh, there, there we go. go. <laughs> so I, I feel um, I've always loved and appreciated living because my parents made us appreciate where we were living. Yes. It was never taken for granted. And we always worked hard with it. We were sent out to do the gardening. I was the best at the gardening, even though the others. But I, what was interesting with COVID is I suddenly realized actually I did have the gardening in me. And my mother, a lot of uh, women, uh, are very precious. I remember a friend of mine whose mother every year won every show for her carnations, her peonies, and no one would have been able to do anything in that garden. Whereas my mother, who's always been an amazing cook and amazing, I thought gardening, she said, darling, I don't like cooking and I don't really like gardening. <laughs> so she said, I'm delighted if you want to do both. And so for me, it was suddenly realizing that with the clock in life turning a dial, that I was now alongside my parents and thinking, yes, I feel I can hopefully see my mother juggle what she could as a woman. I thought, well, perhaps I can juggle still my life and this, certainly mm. for now, whilst touch with this going strong, but I'm helping with a lot of the projects that they don't want to worry about. Right. And I'm enjoying that and they're letting me embrace that. And so with the gardens, we're going along and see Terry in a minute, but with COVID, there was a big wall just over here that we were always, my parents were like, let's just let sleeping dogs lie. You know, Ivy, my mother's like, if you pull that, the whole lot will come down. And that's right. more, <laughs> more, as I say, built, but dollar signs flying yes. up. Uh, but it was the time when dad said, do you think we attack on this wall now? And um, Because there was time. We there was time. 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 And then, and also you realize with Terry, a lot of these people with these crafts and skills to do it, they are not going to be around for no. So I'm like, we've got to make the most of it. Yes. So I'll show you that, you know, we had, it was like a carpet and my hands, no one told me how brutal gardening can be. I mean, I woke up like, oh my God. <laughs> Every morning during COVID. Yeah, because I, and I, someone said, well, perhaps use a hammer next time, but you know, you live and learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we started that, but since then, I have been taking on more and more. And I do relish the idea of trying to see how for the next generation we can preserve the tranquility of the place mm. and the authenticity. Yes. But it's that balance. Some people go very, very commercial. You have to because we've got to keep the tiles on the roof. Yes, yes, yes. But there are ways of trying to handle it so it's not ruining here. People love to walk in and they just, mum even leaves notes saying, this bench is waiting for you. Right, and, you know, right. But just so people feel no one's there, but they've just stumbled across somewhere. Yes, yes. It's a challenge I feel I'd love to take on, but we just have to see what we never know. Yes, exactly. But I'm up but, for but, it. But you're up for it. That's brilliant. And I feel balancing that, you know, why not? Yeah. Women can balance a fair bit. Yeah. Oh they? my gosh, we're the we we're the best balancing act. Yeah. My there, mother's there been is. a good example of it. So I thought, well, <laughs> let's try. Let's go and see Terry now. Okay. Great. So this is our Terry. Right. Uh, well, Julie. <laughs> Hi, Terry. So yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah. I, I so, actually call him Sir Terry of Cernalot because he's like a knight <laughs> shining armor. Since my parents came here, he's been mending the walls, which in these places, as you know, of course. go on forever. Of yep. course I've and just never. as yeah, and when you finish, you're back where you started, which More Terry less, sort yeah. of is. It's like you? it's like doing painting the fourth bridge. Yeah, exactly. right, exactly. So now, what's happening here, Terry? What are well, you doing? I'm, I'm going to have to try and replace this gate now because this door's. Hinges have broke off on the bottom, yep. and that one's come loose. So I'm going to have to try and re-bed them back oh. in somewhere. Okay. Oh my uh, goodness. Prob probably with lead and... With the good old stuff. Yeah, good yeah. old stuff. Yeah. The good old stuff. Because we like to cling on to the doors. My parents love 
the doors. And even yes. though it turns out that could as be you, a new bit, we like we just love seeing as the, you, the, the as botching. You, see, you had to reinforce the, it. They've been reinforced over the years. And yes, there comes yes, a point yes. where it's it's the old. It's marrying the old and the new, isn't it? Now Thank talking you. of which, we've got our brand new COVID wall, as I call it. <laughs> Is it really called the COVID wall? Because this was completely covered in ivy, wasn't it, Terry? Yeah. There was a bulge here that looked a bit ominous and we were, my parents were like, oh dear. But it's a rather extraordinary wall. Can we just, because it's, it's to me, it's built differently than sort of the traditional walls that I see dotted yeah, it, all it, around it, England. Yeah, this is, a, this is a traditional stone and flint walling. It's one of those things that when you look at the, the actual main house, you can see that the fashion is using the local stone, which yes. is literally yeah. everywhere. Yes. Because when this was an archway, a Saxon archway, was this wall here when the leading up? It makes you think, why would it not be? Why would it not be? There used to be an archway, a gateway or something just here. Yeah, yeah. Because you, the modern stones are still in there. Yes, ah. And you see a join down the wall there. Yes, I see that join. That port wall was built before this one was. I see. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so then this was an addition. And yeah. this was an addition, addition. to the, yeah. Yeah. As you see, it is quite a long wall. And if you imagine when we were pulling the ivy off, my parents were like, we've left this for a while because we feel the whole lot could come down. Right, right, right. But it was actually in surprisingly good yeah. condition. It, it had roses in it. Apart from the top, what, two foot or more, the rest yeah. of the wall was not now, too bad. This is, now, what I'm seeing here, is this what you were pulling out during COVID? Yeah. Is this the remnants of yeah. the yeah. ivy? Yeah, yeah. And Look I tell you, this. I couldn't <gasps> move my hands. I didn't realise removing it. ivy would be so... I'm just helping you a little bit Thank more you, here. Thank you, Julie. Thank Any you. Any time. Look at this. So I've got so a war on ivy. Not that we like walls, but if I see <laughs> ivy on a wall, I, I say to you Terry, see. I'm doing it for you. I but this was, was it everywhere. That, you that can't, was you couldn't even see the wall. No. No. So it's literally had a complete... And now you see the beauty of it when you step back. And just because I mean, Terry, working with flint, they're not even like bricks. And you see, you have to use the artistry to make them all fit yes, together. Yes, yes. No one is the same. They're like a snowflake. Yeah. Imagine Terry, aren't they? Every yeah. flint's it's different. It's fantastic. Will the ivy come back? Not on <laughs> my watch. <way. Okay. laughs> it will do if it's neglected. Terry, I, I found it interesting when you said to me, I can tell when one man takes over yeah, from another. Yeah, you, you can. It's quite something, right. isn't it? Yeah. And how can you tell that? <laughs> I don't know, just instinct, I suppose. Um, you can generally tell right. by the mixture of the muck, by the way the stones are laid. It's, yes. It's not, I don't know. Yes, it's, no, I get it. It's those it, small details which yeah, you don't yeah, think yeah, about yeah, with a wall. No, but don't no. think about In it. restoring, no. you're like, well, the other person was a bit tighter on that. And now yeah, this one's it, a bit it, looser. It, 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 Local yes, side of me. Exactly. It, it, it's just, just a kind of, yeah. I don't know, instinct. It's brilliant. instinct. Yeah, brilliant. And how long have you been here? 40 odd years. Uh, no, I don't think it's 40, about 35 years, I think. 30, 30, 30, 35 years. years I've been there. Oh my goodness. And do you love it? <laughs> yeah, good question. You do. You and Mum, it's just yeah. yeah. Me and your mum, yeah. We, yeah, they keep yeah, there. We, they we, love we, it. They we, do a lot we, of. We, he helps we, with the, the restoring and visions that she has, and it's yeah. They do a yeah, lot of great yeah, stuff. Yeah. Cern Abbey is the most magical place. And it was so special for me to see Michael, Barbara, and Jessica again. Mapperton House in West Dorset has been the ancestral seat of the Earls of Sandwich since the 1950s, when the Montague family moved here from Hinchingbrook House in Cambridgeshire. This part of Dorset has always held a very special place in the family's history, so I head to the archives to trace the origins of the Montagues and explore our ties to this beautiful part of Britain. Well, here I am again looking through the archives 
but I've brought in a special guest, you, my husband, because I'm hoping you can help me with something. It's, you know, your family is just, it's like this journey of discovery. Every time I head into the immediate room or open up a letter or find a book, I have more and more questions. And so today I'm hoping you can help me. So I found this book that was made for your uh, great-grandfather, George Montague, the ninth Earl of Sandwich, by his sister. And it's fantastic, these ancestral tablets. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a work of art. Have you seen these before? I have never seen oh. this before and, and, um, until, you've, until you've shown me. And what seems extraordinary about it is the time that Olga, who was the sister of my great-grandfather, spent putting it together. Because it doesn't just trace our family tree. It has all the related branches of other families and, and it shows the kind of interconnectedness and it does it in 3d because you've got these little windows it's here incredible. where you can see through and have people in multiple on multiple pages so that so that you're understanding the connection you're understanding yeah. the other family trees because everybody wants to show off the fact that they're connected with all these other aristocratic families you can see that we've got the hardwicks earls of hardwicks we've got the duke of bolton on another page so you know all these we, sort of shields There's, here don't you well i know some of them <laughs> um but what's so fascinating about what you've uncovered here is the lineage going back beyond the first earl of sandwich the earls of sandwich began as we know in the 1600s exactly but obviously the monty family goes back much further than that in fact we go back all the way to william the conqueror and if you trace back what we can see on this page, yes, you can see we've got Sydney, then we've got Edwards, Thomas, Richard, William. All these Montagues. There's but generations of Montagues going all the way back yes. um, to the time of, of Henry III. And you've got William Montacute. Yes, so I can see where the name changes. So I see Montague, Montague, Montague. And then there's a... It's, it starts to become Montacute. What you've yes. got to remember is that in those days, spelling was there was a lot of variation a lot of fluidity right know. montague probably came from montacute and vice versa sometimes there was an e on the end sometimes there wasn't but what's interesting about this is that we get back to william montacute now he i believe was the grandson of somebody called drogo de montague and drogo de montague was a French nobleman who came over with William the Conqueror right. from Normandy. And there is a place in Normandy called Montaigu-les-Bois, which, which means Montagu of the woods. Right. And Montaigu in French, Mont, uh, hill, yes. mountain. Aigu, sharp, sharp hill. So Drogo um, de Montaigu came over, right. but the story gets really complicated because he came over with William the Conqueror. In, give me a year. In 1066. Thank you. And as part of the Norman Conquest, um, William the Conqueror was William Duke of Normandy. Yes. And he was best friends with Robert, who was the Count of either Monten or Moreton, again, a name that was spelled in different ways. And that chap, Robert, was given the town, the area around what is now Montacute. Which is very near to here. Which is very near to here. Yes. Drogo was given land in Somerset, near somewhere now called Shepton Montague. Oh my, which but, again, is still near to here. But this other chap, Robert, eventually gave Drogo de Montague, Montacute, oh my and goodness. a place called St. Michael's Hill. And St. Michael's Hill is also a pointy hill. Right. So you've got a pointy hill in France and you've got a pointy hill in Somerset and somewhere between those two pointy hills is the origin of the name Montague. Montague. Well, but, but what's most fascinating, of course, is that one of those pointy hills is quite close to here and yes. we've never been. So you're telling me right now, now that I can trace this back, that really that is the place in Somerset could be the origin, if you like, of Montagues as we know it today. I think it almost certainly is. <laughs> <laughs>
all the way up to the fourth Earl of Sandwich in the 18th century. The tablet shows the entire Montague family tree, how we came from Montague, and how we're related to King Edward I, and also William the Conqueror. You may be wondering where the Montague lozenges, which appear on our coat of arms, originate from. So I asked my father-in-law, the Earl of Sandwich. The three diamonds signifies the mountain reflected in water. Montague, the sharp mountain, the Norman French word. And the eagles come from the Montherma, much earlier connection it's in the Middle Ages. And the coronet above. And the coronet above. Seeing the archives, and of course speaking to Luke and my father-in-law, has put me in the mind to go in search of the site of the Norman castle of Montacute. I'm rather excited because I am here in Montacute, and right up there is what I've heard the site of the original castle. So fingers crossed, but you can see it's quite steep. I've got my wellies on, I'm kitted out, but what is also astonishing as I look around me is just to sort of, here, I'm, I'm walking on the land that was once owned and then of course walked on by my husband's ancestors nearly 1,000 years ago. So come along with me, get some wellies on everybody, get your breath switched on, that's for sure. We've got a hike. Breathing, breathing, breathing. I'm loving these two trees here. And of course, sometimes I wish I could go back in time and become a tree surgeon <laughs> and be able to tell how old these trees are, but probably not a thousand years old. However, probably the path that my husband's ancestors walked. Now, I hope you've been breathing. The key is to make your exhale just a tiny bit longer than your inhale. It works. All right, I see a clearing, whoa. Oh my goodness. Wait till you see this, everybody. It's magnificent. Yay, everybody! We've made it to the top. And this was, of course, the site of the original Malt and Bailey Castle, which was built right after the Norman Conquest. And those Normans, they were clever. They chose this spot to showcase their political presence, but also this is the perfect vantage point right here. Now, standing behind me, this tower was built in the 18th century. However, over the years, the castle decayed. And the last thing that was kept standing was the chapel, but that decayed as well in the 16th century, it was gone. So in its place in the 18th century was built this folly. And I can see a door, an entrance, it's open. So I'm gonna head on up. For me, it was so amazing to stand on the site of the original Norman Castle Keep and see where the Montague family originated from in the 11th century. I cannot believe it, but yes, the Montague name technically is 1,000 years old.
Not far from Mapperton, across the fields in this beautiful corner of West Dorset, is the estate of Hook Court. This estate was once owned by the Montague family. Many of you know that we had to leave the family ancestral seat, Hinchingbrook House, in 1955, and we ended up here in Dorset. But why? Well, there is a reason why, and all is explained by my father-in-law. Well, this is very exciting because we are in the newly decorated, renovated uh, muniment room, which is the archive room. And I cannot believe it's the same room it was. <laughs> it's completely transformed. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful and it's comfortable as well. So around us we have now uh, a lot of the archives of the family and one of the archives that I came across when I was moving things out and then back in is, of course, this connection that Mapperton now has, if you like, the Montague family here at Mapperton has had with Dorset. And that is because of what's called the Bolton Estates. And can you explain that to me a little bit more about how this land, I think it was about 5,000 acres at one point, which is adjacent to Mapperton, came into the hands of the Montagues. Yes, I mean, it was originally the fifth Earl of Sandwich's um, marriage that brought that Hook estate in, but they didn't have it um, for all sorts of reasons, tangles with lawyers and so on. <laughs> right. And there were two sisters, uh, twin, not twins, but two, two inherit, who inherited the estate. And that's why it took almost a hundred years for it to become properly partitioned and the part that uh, was inherited uh, was the Hook Estate. Was the Hook Estate and and I've seen all of the uh, coat of arms at Hinchingbrook in the library where it's impaled because you would want to marry somebody of a noble family. So the fifth Earl married, was it the Duke of Bolton's daughter, a so noble family? Mary Paulet, yes that's right. Um, and the Duke of Cleveland was the other uh, part of the family, and, uh, and, and it was his daughter who was the other heiress. And it, it really is it's still too confusing to describe. <laughs> but the important thing is we, we didn't get some of it. We got Hook Estate. And I think Devon was the area of much of the rest of the property. Right. Devon and further north into Somerset. Right, so, so the fifth Earl, we can say in one sense, married a Dorset Devon girl. Is that correct? That's right, That's she, but she was certainly connected, but it was also around Hampshire and Basingstoke, we call it now, Old Basing House. Yes. It was, became a, also was a poor headquarters, but right. that, was, that was not in the family. That went, went separately. So the fifth Earl, and might I add, is I always like to say this, was the fourth Earl's son, the fourth Earl who is, uh, you know, probably More well the, known. Yeah. Is very well known. He marries the Duke of Bolton's daughter, Mary Pollitt. And here, what I have found is the Bolton estate. I found this as I was putting the archives back. No, and this, of course, describes uh, what was in the Bolton estates. And if I just go to the summary page, you can see here, there is where Hook is, is mentioned. And I recognize a couple of these farms because I think they're still part of Mapperton Estate. Is that right? Well, it, it, running down the list, um, obviously, Hook is no longer itself part of it, or Toller. Right. But we have, we have retained Northport and and some of Powerstock and some of Witherston. Yes. So I just thought that was um, wonderful just to see this and then, and to make sense that there is a connection and it really a long association of the Montague family down here in Dorset. Um, well, we go back to 1760s, that sort of time, the, the marriage of the fourth fourth Earl's son, John the fifth Earl. I am planning on visiting Hook because the building is still intact. It's beautiful. And I think that's where, when we look at this visitor's book and I found Alberta's 
name uh, must have been her first visit in 1906, one year after she married George, oh, yeah. but they would stay in that building. And that's what I wanted to ask you. There are sort of carvings of not only the carvings from Duke of Bolton and perhaps those three swords, but are there sandwich carvings as well? Well, they, they were brought together in the, in the shield. I think that was why. Oh my Can I goodness. just have a look at this? Yes, of course. Ooh, well, which, is, which is Albertus? Right here. So Alberta Montague, October 2nd to the 15th. Oh, that's amazing. So that was her first entry. That was her first entry. Yeah. So I do feel that Alberta even has a presence here as well. You know, she was she was coming to Dorset and we can see from this from this book. But Hook, I think, was really only a shooting home for them. They, it was a second home from Hinchingbrook and they would invite the sort of families who had shotguns and came for maybe only two days and go back again. Right. And it, it was um, important um, as a staging post, but it was never a senior property for the family. I will let you know what I find when I go and visit Hook Court, and I'll be sure to take some photographs for you as well, especially if I can find sort of the Bolton and Sandwich Montague together, um, together. Yes. yes. Here in the Staircase Hall at Mapperton, right behind me, is a gorgeous painting of Alberta Sturgis, the ninth Countess of Sandwich. And it was painted by Ambrose McAvoy, who was considered the society painter of the early 20th century. And every time I walk around the Staircase Hall, I feel that Alberta's watching over me. I recently came across this letter in the archives that honestly, I was so excited about. And she wrote this while she was at Hook Court. So you can see the letter had says Hook Court. It's October 12th, soon after her marriage to George Montague. And she wrote it to her, my beloved brother, Hollister. She writes, this is such a heavenly country, very hilly, high hedges that almost meet one's head, now black, with blackberries and such lovely thatched villages. She then continues to write, I met yesterday our neighbors at Mapperton Court, about four miles from here. Never in all my life have I seen a small Elizabethan home so beautiful. She continues, all old oak and wood paneling diamond panes, creepers outlining every window, clematis, lavender, and honeysuckle. And when I found this letter, I, there really aren't any words to describe the emotion that I had knowing that Alberta not only had visited Mapperton, but also said never in all of her life had she seen a more beautiful Elizabethan manner. So there's a part of me that feels we were meant to be here. Oh my goodness. I have arrived at Hook Court, again, once owned by the Sandwich Montague family, but also, you know, I'm walking where Alberta walked. This is where she stayed. And I now know that, uh, that she stayed here in 1906. The first time she came here was, of course, referencing uh, the letter that she left us was in October 1906 when she wrote to her brother and saying what a heavenly country it is. Now, What's interesting, what I see um, right away is the Duke of Bolton's uh, coat of arms right there. So it has the um, three swords and very, very weathered, as you can see, but definitely you can make them out. So that's fascinating to see that. And just looking around the building, these windows, beautiful. 
And the color of the stone is very similar to Matriton, and this does represent the stone around West Dorset. But I am looking for any other carvings that would, you know, tell me that the Sandwich family Montagues were here. Now I do, there we go, there we go, there we go. I was about to say, I do know that the eighth Earl of Sandwich, who came here again with King Edward VII, he liked to show off his power, in particular at uh, Hinching Brook. There's a lot of his uh, markings there. And lo and behold, we have found one here. Uh, you can see Sandwich and of course showing. Uh, there are the five sort of balls uh, even though a coronet for an earl has eight, when it's facing straight on, you see five of them. And that says uh, 1873, and then with a big S for sandwich. So he did, I know he did a lot of repairs and restorations to Hook Court. I almost feel as if this door uh, Alberta would have walked through this door, absolutely. But it really is beautiful uh, and heavenly country as Alberta described it. I mean, if we just walk over here, there's this lovely pond here and very much like Mapperton, if you like, just kind of in the middle of nowhere, very remote, lots of bird song, uh, beautiful heavenly day and you know, I do wonder if, if I've come across any more letters of Alberta at Hook Court, which I'm sure I will be interesting to see if she swam in here. I mean, as many of you know, I'm a big cold water swimmer, uh, especially at the pool, uh, the 18th century pool at Matberton. So I do wonder if Alberta was a swimmer herself, but it really is absolutely magical here and I can see why Alberta did enjoy uh, coming here and thought it was uh, splendid, absolutely splendid. Well, I think those are the two markings that I was really looking for. One of the Duke of Bolton and one of the uh, Earl of Sandwich. And they, that's that, that's that marriage and it all sort of happened here. Oh, I might just do a little walking now because I think Alberta would have done that as well.